What up guys, this is gonna be the Soulbind and Conduits video. And here I'm gonna talk very briefly about sort of what you need to do, uh, how it all works, that sort of thing. And then we're gonna go and take a look at all the different talents that are available in the different Soulbind trees. And we're gonna take a look at the different conduits that are available. Uh, and we're gonna just, as I said, touch on that pretty, pretty lightly, um, really quickly go over, you know, if I think stuff is, is decent or not. And then in the next video, we're going to delve a little bit deeper into kind of the nitty gritty of it. Um, really talk about which trees I think are worth it uh, so that we can go through and rank the covenants. Uh, and we'll do a tier list for disc and for holy uh, for the different covenants. And hopefully that way we can pick one that's going to be the best for us for PvP. Uh, or PvE, if you're that way inclined. And that should kind of wrap up generally the the Soulbinds, Conduits, uh, Covenant sort of stuff that we've been doing over the last couple of videos uh, with you know something that we can have a takeaway from and actually make use of. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the way that you unlock these different soul binds is by doing the entry quests on your chosen covenant and you will actually unlock the first two guys pretty early on uh, when you complete your chosen covenant quests. The third one gets unlocked later in the day when you have finished I think the, the entire of your covenants quest line that I think takes a couple of weeks. Uh, as things unlock uh, due to time gated stuff I'm not exactly sure of the details of it. Uh, but that's kind of not the point of this video. The main issue, uh, the main point of this video is to kind of go through the system itself, which is the talents. Uh, and you will have three different talent trees uh, available to you, depending on your chosen covenant. So obviously it's advantageous to know what they are ahead of time so that you can choose a covenant accordingly, uh, taking into account the two different abilities that the covenant also gives. Now, I'm not going to go through every single talent because it's entirely pointless me reading these out to you. You can check them out for yourselves. So I'm just going to kind of talk a little bit about how it all works. Uh, we'll touch over a few and then we're going to talk about the conduits. So essentially what happens is you go down the tree as you normally would any sort of talent tree. If you remember the Legion artifacts, something like that. And you have these slots on the way down. These slots are what you can put the conduits into once you've learned them. There's three different types. You've got the finesse one, which is a lightning bolt, the endurance one, which is the shield, and the potency one, which is the cross. And there's different types of conduits for each type of slot. You basically work your way down and you pick whichever talents you want to... The, the, they quite vary, so some of the talents will be completely useless for PvP, some will be completely useless for PvE. So you kind of want to check out what's available and kind of make a decision on what you think is going to be most useful for you. Some of them definitely won't be and you'll be like, oh man, you know, <laughs> I don't care about the non-file services. It's like changing your talents and stuff, right? Or getting some random cloth, right? So this tier is pretty lackluster. But there's some really good ones. So you have three different options when it comes to the soul binds, and you can actually switch between them relatively freely. Um, however, switching a conduit in a slot actually has a weak cooldown, resetting your conduit slots. So when you spec, for example, from disc to holy, ideally you want to have two different trees uh, available. Otherwise, you are basically only going to be able to respec once a week, and it's going to be a, a faff. So that's kind of what I've what I've understood from that so far. I'm not a big fan of the the one week cooldown, but what can you do? Uh, switching covenants is even harder from what I've gathered, and you have to do a quest line in order to switch. And I heard switching back is quite hard. Um, I'm not sure exactly how you do it, but again, not the point of this video. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is that you really want to be sure of what covenant you're going for at the start and then pray it doesn't get nerfed, basically. So in the next video, what we're going to do is break everything down and make a tier list for disc and holy for PvP and PvE. 
just general different content types so that we can pick the correct covenant based on the content that we want to do the most or want to focus on. So that's what we've got coming up. This is the Kyrian trees and we've got the Necrolord trees. Some of the trees definitely more useful for PvP than others. Uh, some obviously more useful for PvE than others, which makes sense. Some of them have really good talents like, um, what have we got? We've got Duration of Incoming, Interrupt, Snare, Root Effects reduced by 25%, really strong. We've got one that uh, allows Door of Shadows to free from Roots and Snares, so this is really strong for Priest, this Priest that doesn't have a freedom. Uh, this guy also has a really good final one, which is when you mind game someone, you get a bunch of Versa and you give allies a bunch of Versa, so this is obviously really strong. Venthyr looking really good in general, I'll just give that a little spoiler. Then you've got other ones, which is uh, it's ultimate form, so it makes Fleshcraft you know, immune to CC. So this is just like a little taster of the stuff. If you want to uh, check out all of the talents, then I will link this talent tree in the description of the video. I will also link a Google Sheet in the description, which has a lot more information on uh, kind of the details. And this is where I'm making my tier list and ranking the different uh, covenants finally. Uh, which is a kind of a process. First I'm going through the conduits, ranking those so that I can rank how valuable the slots are. Then I'm going to rank the individual talents while including the slots that are available with those talents. Uh, I'm going to give the Soulbind an overall rating and then uh, finish up by using those ratings to give the Covenant an overall rating based on the Soulbinds and the abilities that they give. Uh, again, this is preliminary, it may change depending on buffs, nerfs, whatever. Right now, it's not the focus of this video, I'm just giving you the rundown. And I think it's time we move on to conduits. So this is going to be the conduits portion, and we're just going to go through the conduits that are available to us. And it looks a little bit intimidating, but I promise you it's not. We're just going to be focused on this blue box for today. I'm going to talk about tier list stuff in the next video. Now, the way that these covenants, uh, sorry, these conduits are distributed is you have obviously three different types, potency, endurance, and finesse. And there are a lot of potencies, uh, but not a lot that are useful for your current spec. So you have four disc ones, four holy ones, four shadow ones, and then four covenant potency conduits. Uh, of which obviously only one of them will be useful to you depending on the covenant that you've chosen. Then we have three endurance conduits available and we have four finesse conduits available that are kind of generic to your class. So to start off with disc, we have uh, Exaltation. Rapture's duration is increased by two seconds and its powered shield enhancement is increased by 10%. Or if you spec for Spirit Shell, then basically just the same thing to spiritual. Now the numbers in green are the rank. Conduits actually increase in rank and they have, I believe, 15 ranks. Uh, so 10% is the base amount on the, the level one conduit. And this actually scales, you can see here in the ranks column, that's all this is for. This scales up from 10% uh, all the way up to 25%. So when you have the max rank conduit, your power shield enhancement is actually increased by 25%. That's kind of how that works. Uh, and it will be the same all the way through. The, the green number is the one that scales. So we've got pain transformation. Pain suppression also heals your target for 10% of their max health. So that's kind of reminiscent of the Azerite trait in BFA. Uh, then one that I think could potentially be really good for PvP if Radiance is used is Shining Radiance. Powered Radiance's healing is increased by 33%, and this actually scales all the way up to 79%, uh, which is actually an insane amount, and it's going to be really interesting to see how this scales with Ultimate Radiance, the PvP talent, uh, because if this applies first, and then Ultimate Radiance second, then Ultimate Radiance obviously is gaining a lot more value from this, uh, and Radiance is going to do an insane amount of healing. 
Uh, then the last one we've got is Swift Penitence. The damage or healing of your first bolt of penance is increased by 25%. And again, this one scales really high. This scales all the way up to 60%. So definitely a, definitely a solid one there. Then we've got the Holy Potencies. Focus Mending. Prayer of Mending does 20% increased healing to the initial target. Holy Oration. Spells that reduce the cooldowns of your Holy Words reduce them by 5% more. This scales all the way up to 20%. We've got Lasting Spirit. Guardian Spirit's duration is increased by 2 seconds and it increases healing received by an additional 10%, scaling to 25. And we have Resonant Words. Casting a Holy Word spell increases the healing of your next heal or flash heal by 10%, again scaling to 25%. The Shadow Potencies. We have Dissonant Echoes. Void Bolt deals 35% more damage. Just flat. While not in Void Form, Mind Flay has a 15% chance to allow you to cast Void Bolt. Um, and then while in Void Form, Void Bolt has a 15% chance to reset the cool, cooldown of Void Bolt. So you should be turreting Void Bolts. And that actually scales up to 36%, which is quite a high proc rate. Then we have Haunting Apparitions. Your Shadowy Apparitions deal 25% more damage, scaling up to 60%, which is a lot, actually. Uh, Mind Devourer. Mind Blast deals 7% increased damage and has a 10% chance to make your next devouring play cost no insanity. Uh, and Rabid Shadows, your Mindbender slash Shadow Fiend's attack speed is increased by 20% and deals 10% more damage. I think it's important to note that you can actually use these conduits um, even if you're not in Shadow Spec. So if you have a Rabid Shadows conduit in as disc, your Shadow Fiend and, or Mindbender will still get benefit of this. Um, which I think is a big deal. Uh, and then we have the Covenant Potencies. Courageous Ascension. Ascended Blast deals 10% increased damage and Ascended Eruption deals an additional 1% damage per stack of Boon of the Ascended, scaling up to 25%. Shattered Perceptions. Mind Games lasts an additional 3 seconds, which is actually a lot considering it's 5 seconds base, uh, and deals an additional 20% damage or healing, scaling up to 35%. We have Festering Transfusion. Unholy Transfusion lasts 5 seconds longer and deals 10% more damage and healing. Uh, and that scales to 25 as well. And then Fey Fermata. Your Fey Guardians leave behind a 60% effective copy of their benefit, lasting 3 seconds when they jump to a new target. And this scales up to 7.2 seconds, which is quite a long time. Um, I think this is more of a PvE benefit. I think this one for sure more PvE. I'm not too sure about this one. I feel like the, the Necrolord um, Covenant abilities are not that strong in general. Right, we've got the Priest Endurance Conduits now. So we've got Charitable Soul, Casting Power Shield on an ally also shields you for 10% of the amount uh, for 10 seconds, and this goes up to 25%. Definitely, definite potential with this against Dark Leaves, I would say. Uh, Lights Inspiration, Desperate Prayer heals you for an additional 5% of your max health over 5 seconds. And that's scaling to 20 and translucent image for the first five seconds of fade you take five percent reduced damage uh, and that scales up to 15 percent so considering fade is off global this is really really valuable uh this is half of a faint plus it's off global um so i think this is really strong and then we have the four finesse uh covenants covenants why do i keep saying that the four finesse conduits uh, we have Clear Mind, Dispel Magic, Purify, and Master Spell cost 20% less mana, and this scales to 35%. This is, like, so good. So, so good. Um, for a lot of matchups for this. And then we have Mental Recovery. After Psychic Scream and Mind Bomb, or Slash Mind Bomb, rather, ends, affected target's movement speed is reduced by 40% for 5 seconds. Uh, not sure if this is going to be dispellable, but I think it's really strong all the same. Scales up to 70%. We've got Move with Grace, Levitate grants 10% increased move speed, scaling up to 25%, which is nice as a passive, uh, but important to know that Levitate will fall off if you take damage. And then Power unto Others, Power Infusion incurs a 5 second reduced cooldown when you cast it on an ally, scaling all the way up to, I should change these, it's not percentage, it's flat, um, scaling all the way up to 20 second reduced cooldown though, which is not bad when it's a 2 minute cooldown, actually. Uh, you can combine that with the PI legendary that allows you to PI someone else and get it yourself as well, I would say, and, and that's going to be really valuable. So that is the kind of summary of the conduits we have available. Um, 
obviously they go into the relevant slots. Let me select priest. Um, you can see, and so then we can pick the different ones on the talent calculator. As I said, I'll link it in the uh, description. And you can see the different ranks that are available as well. So this was the Soulbinds and Conduits video. Obviously a lot of information there. Uh, as I said, we will put the um, spreadsheet and talent calculator in the description. If you guys wanna you know, delve a little bit further into it, take a little bit more time to read stuff, take it all in, uh, I recommend it. Uh, it's going to give you the best possible understanding of kind of how this is all going to work and what you know what you like what you want to aim for what's going to be good for your uh, desired content so that's all for now next video is going to be about ranking the soulbinds and ranking the conduits so that we can form an opinion on which soulbind overall is going to be the strongest and then we're going to combine that information with which uh, covenant abilities we think are the strongest and hopefully come out with a tier list for different content types on which covenant slash soulbind is going to be the strongest to go for uh, assuming no nerfs if blizzard do put in any significant changes or nerfs that will change the outcome of you know our, our results then it will be changed on the spreadsheet unless it's something considerable i'm not going to make another video on it but by all means, you know, keep the spreadsheet to hand so that if anything does change, you'll know about it. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.